Thanks, Dan Hogan of Ace. Stu speaking. Hi, right, thanks, Dan Bates. This is Aeromedical Control, Rapid Launch Control Coordinator. We're going to task you to a, a major incident that's been declared on the M5 motorway southbound, about a kilometre south of Woodbine. We've got there a bus versus semi trailer collision at high speed, uh, an estimated 40 patients. The majority of them are still trapped, but we've got reports at this point of many red, at least 10 orange, and around five concerns to the feet. Uh, in terms of resources, we've got police and fire on the scene. Uh, further resources are coming. You'll be looking for Inspector 29 there as being commander, and we're going to be on Channel Sydney Southwest. Um, they're asking for a medical team to get going now to assist with triage and treatment. Here, mate, I think they're going to release mate. that first set of uh, patients very soon. I think we've got too. Sandeep to look after the walking wounded over in the green zone. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll see that first group of patients. There's good comms between the two of us, and um, we'll, right, yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay, you got all your equipment? Yep, blood and set. ultrasound. Good to go. Okay. Ah! Come on, buddy. Tell your story walking. Just over there, mate. You're right, Sandeep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Left chest. Left chest. Left chest. All right. Yep. Get him. You're struggling with your breathing. Let me have a look here. Okay. You take him. Let me have a look. Yep. Mate, just over there. You've got a, you've got a collapsed <laughs> lung. We're going to look after you. It's okay. Just a... All right, mate. All right. Yep. We're going to put a needle between your ribs and release that pressure. You'll be okay. All right. Bubba, what do you got here, mate? I've got uh, left side of chest, just okay. setting yeah. up. I tell you what, Looks he's like got a big pneumo. Let me have a quick look here beforehand. Just let me have a look. Okay. All right. Mate, he's got good lung sliding. He's got right. nasty pulmonary contusions, okay? Decompress his left chest. Yep. All right, he's got needs pain relief and oxygen, okay? Let us know if anything changes. Put it here. Oh, goodness, all right. Thanks, Thanks Sam. What are you doing? Your, your tummy hurts, does it? Sorry. I'm not going to push, okay? I'm just going to have a look. Okay. Just relax, mate. Relax. I'm just going to have a look, okay? You're... You're bleeding internally, okay? You've got a lot of blood in your belly. I don't know Keep what's going bleeding. That way. You're going to need an operation at hospital, chest, but chest. we'll take good care of you, okay? What do you got? This lady's got massive hemoperitoneum. One sec. Massive hemoperitoneum. She needs a good cannula. Yep. Uh, and start, get some fluids ready on a pump set, but no blood at this stage, okay? No mate? worries. What mate, do you got, Lee? Mate, uh, blood force trauma, 20s. Yeah. Cold tube, hypoventilating apnea. Yeah. I'm worried about his left side chest. Yes, yeah, bruised there. Let me have another look here, mate. This is a cold tube, was it? Cold tube. All right. Hey, you've actually got lung sliding. But um, I don't think you're ventilating him on that side. I'll tell you what, let's pull the tube back you're a right, centimetre guys. Keep or two. Keep each other company. And let's just see if we can... Uh, I think you're down the right main stem bronchus. How's that? Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay. All right. So I'm hoping this is getting pretty full. Have we got anyone for transport? To what? Oh, not yet. What's happened here? I've got two chests, one thick yeah. chest. This is the abdomen. She's barely conscious now. Yep. Have, you got, a, have okay. you got a carotid pulse on her? Uh, she is decreased LSC. She's weak and thready, carotid. She's going to die without blood. Have some break. I know this is off piece for you. I'll tell you what. All right. Where's yeah. that blood? Take the chest over there. Yeah. No, we'll no, be taking so this abdomen. No, don't worry about that. James, you're going to take this young lady. She's bleeding into two. her belly, yep. and she's going to die without blood. I want you to give her these two units now. Yep. yep. On your way to hospital, just one sec. On your way to hospital, you're going to make sure you let them know. Unstable, positive fast scan, and you want a theatre available for your arrival, OK? Yep. Jeez, guys, what have we got here? And what's going on with this guy? All right, look, let's just stop here for a sec. Just, just ventilate her for me. Why don't you take some shrapnel straight through the left chest? All right, ventilate. Yep. Oh, There's no big pneumo. No big pneumo here. Oh, okay, let me look. Just have a look in the belly. No, not just yet. We'll see what this looks like. Look, this, no, guys, the, the heart's not beating. There's no pericardial effusion here. This poor lady's passed away. We're going to take her to a temporary sec, morgue, okay? Come on, yeah. Come into you. Um, great job. Appreciate your efforts. And right now there, guys, we're going to cause, cause a uh, pause. Okay? Pause point. Do you want to stretch it this way a little bit? Whew. They say that seeing is believing. So that's why today, instead of trying to tell you how ultrasound might help in a scenario like this, 
I decided to show you. The domain of pre-hospital and retrieval medicine is unique because it provides critical care physicians with the privilege of leaving the four walls of their hospital and taking their skill set to the point in which patients need it most. As ultrasound has evolved, it too has become smaller, more portable. It is coming along with us into the pre-hospital arena. Now, I'm convinced that just three ultrasound modalities, eFast, lung and basic echo, is all that you need in your armamentarium to make an increased difference to patients like this. Seeing is believing. So when we use ultrasound to answer clinically specific dichotomous questions, we're no longer relying on the inference of vital signs, auscultation, palpation, inspection. We're seeing the problem, we're seeing the pathology with our own eyes, and we're making diagnoses quicker and with greater accuracy. So let's recap what we've seen today. First thing, ultrasound improves your diagnostic accuracy. In the heat of battle, when you are under the pump, there are some injuries and pathologies that are frankly identical on physical exam. Pneumothorax, pulmonary contusion with chest wall spasm, and endobronchial intubation. Yet with ultrasound, there's unique, readily identifiable differences between each of these that allow you to differentiate each from the other. Second thing, ultrasound improves your resource utilization. Blood products, for example, are so limited on a major incident that there's going to be errors in judgment about who receives what and when. So by seeing the pathology, the volume of blood in the abdomen, and then the likely clinical trajectory for that patient, you are bound to make more uh, informed and more accurate decisions about who gets those rare limited resources. Finally, ultrasound improves your procedural guidance. And I'm not talking about ultrasound-guided vascular access amongst chaos like this. I'm talking about the correct identification of an injury because you've seen it. And because you've seen it, you can, get, you can correctly intervene at the appropriate time. But on the flip side, like our last patient, you may identify a patient who is not going to benefit from a, an otherwise indicated procedure, like pleural decompression or a resuscitative thoracotomy. In the modern world, we are bound to see more and more major incidents and mass casualty events. The next time I face one for myself, I'll be taking an ultrasound with me because it's going to improve my patient care. Hopefully now, you're all encouraged to take one with you too. Thank you. And just, just as my colleagues leave, could I have another round of applause for these guys for making that all happen? Thank you very much. So while our, our patients uh, and practitioners leave the floor, um, Kat Evans from Smack Force News. Nice to meet you. Um, I'd like to uh, ask you a little bit of a tough question, Chris. How can we use ultrasound and do use ultrasound for triaging patients with minor injuries? It's a really good point, and I think it, it uh, stems to a bigger issue. We shouldn't be just, because we use ultrasound on a daily basis, we shouldn't just be taking it out into the pre-hospital arena about, without thinking about who we scan in our own service, and then what are the limitations of ultrasound in that field. Uh, there's a famous quote, a fool with a, a stethoscope will still be a fool with an ultrasound. And if you haven't thought about where you introduce your ultrasound into your workflow pre-hospitally, you're going to make errors. And having a stable patient, some of, you know, most of the time it's just a flip of a coin if they've got an important injury or not. So I would focus on the sickest first. Maybe we'll have to look what happens with uh, triage, sieve and sort. Absolutely. Thank Good you. Morning. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. A lot of